Hi, I'm Nancy Bell from Oshkosh Public Library, and this is Book Buzz, where I'll take one book that's recently been getting a lot of buzz on social media, review sites, uh, bestsellers lists, etc. I'll break it down into definable elements, and then I'm going to suggest three read-alikes uh, that I think have similar themes, writing styles, and overall general vibes. This month, we are talking literary fiction and possibly unlikable slash complex characters with Emma Klein's second novel, The Guest. This novel has been highly anticipated um, by publishing across the board. Everyone's very excited after her debut novel, The Girls. So in this one, Alex, the main character, is deceptive, she's opportunistic, she's manipulative. She's a 22-year-old grifter and sex worker who finds herself living on the credit card of an older man named Simon for the summer. At least until she commits a faux pas and is escorted by his assistant to the train station with a ticket back to New York City. But New York City is a place she can't return to. Uh, her roommates kicked her out, her so-called friends want nothing to do with her, um, and there might even be an angry ex-client waiting for her return. But Simon will surely take her back, right? All she has to do is wait it out, um, and then she'll reappear at his Labor Day party, and she'll, he'll just take her back. Um, I think Library Reads described this perfectly when they said that there is nothing she won't do, no one she won't uh, manipulate to get what she needs. A bit more time. So let's go ahead and jump into these elements. So first and foremost, as I kind of alluded to in the intro, this is a literary fiction novel. Literary fiction is a bit of a broad, nebulous, ambiguous genre that I even have difficulty explaining, but I'm going to do my best for you. So when I think of literary, literary fiction, it's almost always character driven. Uh, the plot is really propelled by the actions and decisions made by the characters themselves, as opposed to events happening to them. Uh, when it is the events happening, it's really more the impact on those events on the character specifically than the action that they have to take. Um, literary fiction usually is challenging us in some way when we read it. I would say that a lot of classics that we read are literary fiction. Um, it could be the content itself. Uh, it could be exploring moral values, social and political issues, something like that. Um, it could also be blurring the line between hero and villain. There's no right or wrong, there just is. Seems to be a common theme recently. Um, the stylistic decisions could also be challenging. Is it a nonlinear storyline? There's not really a guaranteed arc or formula that is really common in romance novels or mysteries. Um, it's the, the genre as a whole has like these intangible details um, that when you read one, you know that you've read literary fiction. Um, this one specifically, I would say, is more of a character study um, as a subgenre of literary fiction. Um, it's more introspective um, in an examination of Alex's internal thoughts and feelings um, as opposed to more of a broad cast. So it's much more narrow, narrowly focused on Alex. Uh, who I think is a flawed and unlikable character. I don't think that she has that many redeeming qualities. Um, and maybe part of the exploration in this novel is how she could even be redeemed when she seems so callous throughout much of the book. Um, this book is really compelling, however. Not necessarily because we care about Alex, but we're driven to keep reading more as a train route train wreck where you can't really look away. She keeps making these choices and the decisions and you really just want to scream at the page. So our first read-alike is Vladimir by Julia May Jonas. After years of an open marriage, our unnamed main character finds herself obsessed with her college's new hire novelist Vladimir Volinsky. All the while, her husband John, the English department's chair, is being accused of sexual misconduct by five female students. As the scandal begins to slowly devolve both of their professional and personal lives, um, she retreats further into this obsessive fantasy, uh, which might lead to action involving Vladimir. So why is this a good read-alike uh, for the guests? 
first and foremost. It is literary fiction. Um, and it's also a character study, I would say. It's really making us question those traditional values of what marriage is. Is it monogamous? Is it polyamorous? Um, just having an, a very open marriage and widely accepted, at least for the characters themselves, I think makes it more literary in that feeling. It's questioning something that we have accepted before. Um, it really dives deep into this unnamed narrator. She is the only voice you hear the entire book um, and you really get her internal monologue and every thought and feeling that she has uh, which makes this novel very character driven every decision is made from her perspective and we are experiencing how that changes her surroundings and how that ex uh, that changes her own experience of what's going on um, that being said being in her mind 100% of the time you guys I don't normally recommend books that I don't like. Um, I greatly disliked this character. Um, it was very hard for me to read this book um, just because I did not agree with anything that she was doing, um, which sometimes, you know, the literary fiction aspect of it is what we need um, to make us expand our worldviews, right? Um, but I just I did not like this woman and what she was doing. Um, but because of that, it was really compelling. I needed to know what happened in her story, what happened with her and her husband, Vladimir and his wife. How did this all come to an end? Um, and so for all of those elements, I think it's a pretty good read-alike uh, for the guest. Next up, we have House of Sand and Fog by Andre de Bus. In House of Sand and Fog, it's it's a story about a series of small mistakes and how they can unravel multiple lives. So we have Kathy who finds herself with nowhere to go after suddenly being evicted from her inherited home, which is, as is announced to her on that day, to be auctioned off the next day in a county tax sale. We also have Colonel Birani, an exiled Iranian officer, who sees this house as an opportunity to buy at a low price and sell at a high price to create a, be a better life and allow him to stop working menial jobs to provide for his family. When it's discovered that Kathy was wrongfully evicted by the county due to a bureaucratic error, Birani has already used his life savings and son's college fund to improve the property. And these two things at odds create an unsolvable conflict between two people refusing to give up. So this book is also literary fiction. Um, we are seeing this moral quandary, um, who's right, who's wrong, does that exist in, in this scenario? Um, how would we resolve this when I claim as an unsolvable conflict? Um, also, there's some cultural implications um, that are really thought-provoking with Colonel Bayrani being an exiled Iranian officer and we have um, a Caucasian woman. Um, and then this book is also told between their, their perspectives. It flips back and forth. Um, we get to go into their internal mindset set and see their perspectives. So we get to witness these characters initially set in motion by this happenstance, this clerical error, um, but then the rest of the plot is moved forward by their actions and decisions. Um, so I believe it's very character driven. We also have some very flawed, complex, sympathetic and realistic characters. Um, we have a woman who's been ousted from her home and has nowhere to go. Um, she's an alcoholic and drug addict. Um, and so she's making very difficult decisions, not the right decisions, but who can make, who could say whether they're right or wrong, really. Um, and then you have Colonel Birani, who learns about this hardship and also has his own dream that he wants to fulfill. Um, and so it is this, this main conflict between these two people, as well as other secondary cast of characters who become involved. It makes it really compelling because we want to know what happens at the end. Um, this is also a really good movie starring Ben Kingsley, and it came out in like 2003. So if you don't want to read this book, I suggest you watch the movie. It was really good. And our last real like for today is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Mashve. In early 2000, our unnamed 24-year-old protagonist has reached near complete alienation from others. 
Her parents both died her freshman year of college and now graduated, she uses her inheritance to pay for her life on the Upper East Side. Her limited interactions with people are with cashiers at her local bodega, an on-again, off-again boyfriend who honestly treats her really poorly, um, and her best friend Reva. Also not a great relationship as she truly finds Reva annoying. She does have a job working at a Chelsea gallery, but she spends part of every workday napping in a supply closet. She's insanely dissatisfied with life and she decides to hibernate the rest of the year away. With chemical and medical assistance of Dr. Tuttle and his easily dispensed pills. Um, so the author using dry delivery, irony, and understanding of everyday absurdity, um, our protagonist's situation reads more as darkly humorous instead of horribly tragic. So I think that this book, even though the setup is so different. Um, I think it's a good read alike because it is literary fiction. The author is exploring other paths to living without conception, um, production, relationships, really living untraditionally. Um, so the genre matches there. It's a really complex character. We may or may not understand why she's making this decision to just tap out of life and live the way she is. Um, but I think that that is what makes her interesting. Uh, it's really character driven because it's her decision to just hibernate this year away that leads to other things happening in her life that make her um, really address certain things in her life. Um, and it's really compelling because of that. We want to know if she makes it through this year of hibernation. Um, she's taking all of these drugs and medications. Are those real? Are they not? How does it affect her um, in her quote unquote real life? And those are the three read likes I have for you today. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to the library's YouTube channel for more content. If you have any questions or suggestions, please go ahead and leave a comment. Uh, or you can always get a hold of me at the library reference desk, which I'll leave a link to down below. Thank you so much for watching, and let's all get back to reading.